Welcome back to this video and welcome back to this series where we will build an entire application with GraphQL, React, Node and MongoDB and some charts in our front-end app later. In the last video of this series, I introduced you to the project or mostly to what GraphQL is. Now I want to get started setting up this project and creating our Node Express server, which will host our GraphQL API in the end. And for that, let's first of all plan the API for this series and then let's get started. So before we write any code, let's roughly plan the, the API we're going to create, the application we're going to create, so to say. So how can we design this API? Well, let's first of all think about the main entities we'll have in this project. Remember, I want to create an event booking API and also a front-end for that. So what we will need are events some event objects, event models, and also users, because who else would book our events, right? Now, our events and users will, of course, be connected. Users can book events, events are booked by users, and users, or some users at least, will also be able to create an event. Every event should have some creator who, well, did create it. Now, our events therefore have these typical CRUD operations. We can create them, update them, delete them, and uh, view them, so get a list of all events or get data about a single event. And our users are kind of connected to that because it's in the end a user who creates an event or who updates an event and so on. Now, when getting our events, I also want to be able to filter. I want to be able to get all events or all events created by a particular user or all events booked by a user. So we'll have to create our API such that we can actually either get all events or apply these filters. Now, we also, of course, have some actions regarding our users. Users can be created and users can be locked in, essentially. We could also add functionality to get rid of users, but for this demo application, I want to be able to do these two things with users. And, of course, users will also be able to interact with our events. You can book an event and you can cancel a booking. So this is the functionality I want to build here, or that is what this API should be capable of doing. And we'll get there step by step throughout the series, and we'll later add a front end that helps us with that. For now, let's get started setting up our project and creating that base Node Express server, which will run our GraphQL API. For that, I will start here in the command line and I navigate it into the folder where I want to store my project folder. And there I will simply create a new project. You can also do that in your Finder or Explorer. A new folder, basically. And I will name it GraphQL React Event Booking, anything like that. So that is my folder name. Next, I will open that folder with uh, my favorite IDE here, which is Visual Studio Code. Of course, you can use any IDE or text editor you like. And here is my open folder. It's basically empty besides a git ignore file because I will use git for managing my code and my VS code file, which holds the settings for this workspace. But that is it. I got no other content in there. Now, first of all, I want to turn this into an NPM managed project so that I can use NPM to install dependencies like Express or GraphQL packages and, um, yeah, well, use NPM in this project. So for that, I'll just open my integrated terminal, could be the normal terminal navigated into this folder too, and there I will run NPM init. And here I will simply confirm all the defaults by hitting enter. And after this, we got this nice package.json file with this basic information for the project. Now with that created, let's install a couple of dependencies which we'll need. And I will start very basic, we'll later add a database and everything, but for now I just want to install everything I need to have an up and running Node Express server. For that, I will use npm install dash dash save to install the Express framework. You could use a different framework, but I want to use Express here to set up this general Node Express server. And then I will use the Express GraphQL package later to run our uh, GraphQL um, 
API on that server. So npm install dash dash safe express is the command here. I'll also install the body parser package so that I can extract JSON content from incoming requests. And this is it for now. I will also install one other package in a second. That other package, which I install with the dash dash safe dev flag to mark it as a development only dependency, will be nodemon a package I can use to automatically restart my node server whenever I change something in the code. Now with that all set up, I'll create an app.js file where I will um, set up my node express server. And for that, I will first of all import express by requiring it from, from the express uh, package. And I will also import body parser by requiring that from the body parser package. Now I can create my app and I'm using ES6 or next generation JavaScript syntax here in, ca in case you haven't noticed. I'm using const here for example. I'll also use arrow functions later and so on. So here I'll create my app by calling express as a function. This uses express imported from the express package to um, create an express app object which we can in turn use to start that node server and so on. And I will not dive deeply into express and so on in this series. I uh, expect basic knowledge of that for the rest of the series so that we can focus on the more interesting parts here. And with that app object created, one thing I can do is I can call the listen method here and listen on port 3000 for example, you could use a different port which will be the, the port under which we can visit this page later. Now I will also use my body parser middleware to be precise it's a JSON functionality to parse incoming JSON bodies and with that we have this setup finished. I want to do one other thing though. I could now run this app by running node app.js and this would start this server and on localhost 3000 we could now visit it. Um, there we wouldn't see much because I don't have a single method in there to handle my incoming request and show something meaningful. So I will quit this because I also want to run this server differently. I will use a script here in the scripts section of the package.js file. And I'll name it start, which is a, a special script name, which we can trigger with npm start from the command line. And here I will not access or not run node app.js, which, which I could do, but I will use nodemon, that other package we installed. The advantage here is that if I now run npm start, this script gets executed, nodemon starts, and nodemon will automatically restart that server whenever we change something in our code and save it. And this saves us the extra work of quitting the server and restarting it manually. So with that, the bare bone node express server here is up and running. And just to quickly see that this works, I will uh, listen to get requests to slash, so to the root route, and there I have my default middleware function which receives these three arguments and I want just, uh, will just send some uh, text back so that we can see that in the browser. So if I save that it now restarts as it should and if I visit localhost 3000 you can see hello world here. So this is this Node Express server up and running and now we're ready to start working on GraphQL and adding our first GraphQL logic to this project.